Rainer, where do we have him? So Rainer, um, Rainer. you can use P1 or P3, but I think P1 might be better because uh, you get marau- you're going to get Marauders to slow them down. But then the problem with P1 is that it sucks no versus certain enemy comps. So um, against the map, it's some. it won't be as good in some cases. Um, P1 also requires like hit squads of infantry everywhere, whereas with P3, you can just later on use uh, Banshees, Banshees or yeah. uh, Battle Cruisers, and they're both nice, nicer oh, than, pretty nice. than Bio. Uh, P1 has a stronger early game. P3 has a stronger late game, of course. Yeah. But with that said, they're both, um, because they require hit squads, they're both going to be hard to control. And your natural, it's like... Uh, with P3, it's kind of hard to defend unless you just mass spider mines, but then trickles will also eat up the spider mines. So that sucks. So I think P1 is going to be better for defense in general and still not very good. So <laughs> I put Rainer in D. Okay. How about Eveling? Yeah. Uh, Rainer's not good, not but good. he's not horrible. Uh, not horrible. Again. His drop pods allow him to get to deeper places. So deeper um, places. We've... <laughs> Go ahead. So P1 or P3. P1 allows you to get an earlier foothold. Keep in mind that, yeah, you don't have mules, but uh, pretty much if you don't survive uh, past past eight minutes, then uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, for P1 Rainer, uh, if his his turn on time is eight minutes after that, then no matter how well your build is, um, mules don't really start netting the income until past that point. So um, P1 is is a way to get that foothold early on, start dropping, tr- um, start dropping all your infantry and start securing zones so that if uh, if an, another void rift appears there, then they're in place and uh, just got it down. Um, P3 allows you to, if you can make it past the early game, and <laughs> your if. mid game is okay. Yeah. P, uh, P3 allows you to pr- essentially clear out most of the void rifts with your Hyperion and, and Banshee. Uh, as they start getting reduced cooldowns early on uh, in order to deal with void risks I mean you get uh, once your uh, dust wings and Hyperion come out that's kind of a freebie but after that uh, you gotta start investing more the best way to reduce the cooldowns is um, if you can start pumping out Banshees or the most cost effective way to do it and for void risks if you if you don't have Dust wings or Hyperion available, you can just start dropping Banshees on top of the Void Risk, given there's not too much defenses or detection around, and kind of treat them semi like Nova's Banshees and just use them to uh, establish control over those areas. And again, they're flying units. Mentioned before, there's a lot of dead space around part of Parcel. So have them kill the Void Rift and then just put them in a dead space and just. Um, keep them there until the next void rift comes up, or or a propagator passes by and just start uh, harassing the propagator. And sometimes you can hit the propagator, it aggroes to the banshees, then you have it go to the dead space, and then essentially making the propagator kind of waste its time uh, getting to your base while whittling it down. I have them from B to C. Okay. <sighs> What do you think, Tutu? Are you okay with C, or is he really D? So it's like the people in C, they um, they can survive early on, or they have ways to survive the early game, and uh, and their mid game is not so bad. For P for Rainer, P one early game is strong, but later on, as you split your army, you're you're gonna. If you split your army, it's not going to be really strong because Rainer needs a big, huge bio ball to be effective. And 
if you're splitting your army to control areas, then your fireball will take even longer to power up. Yeah, you, you'll take longer to mass it. And you need to control all those groups. And you need to know how to replace, like, you don't want too many troop, uh, too many Marines in one place, because then your main army will be weaker. But if you don't have enough, then you can't kill the rifts. So it's like, it's hard to balance. What do you think, Evelyn? Yeah, I agree it's hard to balance, but to be... Uh, I think he's in a better place than Kerrigan. That's that's my um, analysis okay. of it. Uh, yes, you do have to um, kind of be very careful. I Kind of in your head, try to figure out how much supply do I need to have just sitting around guarding areas and how much supply do I need to go out to push. Uh, in my head, roughly about 30 supply worth of infantry is enough for pushing power for Rainer, and then the rest can kind of just spread around and just as you're pushing just make sure to replenish that supply which is again doable with drop pods well with, with it's nice it's okay talking about the map itself in a vacuum but i think what we're considering here is that voiders are a very early game heavy mutator and it will take a lot out of you to deal with early rifts. You will need to sacrifice a bit of economy if you want to defend the first rift or destroy the first rift. Either way, you need a fast bunker or fast marines to destroy, and that will cost you economy. Very important early game economy. Plus, it'll take a while for Rainer to expand, so I'm not really sure how fast you can get that death ball army. And remember, the quadruple rift spawn at 8 minutes 20 seconds. And usually they're really far away. So are you confident that you get to that power level at an okay time before it ramps up too much? More confident in Rainer than Kerrigan. Well, they don't have, they don't, Rainer doesn't have to be worse than Kerrigan to be in D. He just has to be closer to Kerrigan than he is to Alarak, Artanis, Phoenix, and Nova. I'm starting to think Kerrigan's more like E. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, if if we're gonna if we're gonna move to Kerrigan to E, I'm okay with a Kerrigan and I mean Rainer being in D. <laughs> just demoted Kerrigan just just so Rainer can be lower. <laughs> Rainer Cause, really cause, like Kerrigan's really hard to use. I like, I yeah. definitely not... agree. And it's and not you even lose her. Good. This like, is one of those times for Rainer, that I agree Rainer, with. You lose a Marine or go ahead. I said, yeah, Kerrigan, you lose Kerrigan. You're you're really screwed. You're you, royally you lose, screwed. Hey, you, you lose a Marine, you lose a Firebat, you lose a Hellbat, a uh, Medic. It, it, it's not that that serious. <laughs> like that saying, you come with a Queen, you best not miss. <laughs> or something yeah. like that. But yeah, uh, this is one of the few times that I would agree with Toxic Spill on where he put Kerrigan. I think Kerrigan's basically... No, 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 actually he put Kerrigan in F. No, he's that's not for F. just regular brutal, not not considering yeah. mutation. So <laughs> this is a different beast right now. It, it, I know, I know. It's just very rarely that I ever agree with anything he put on a tier list. It's anyway, it's not relevant. Okay, are you guys okay with put? Is there anyone worse than Kerrigan here? I don't think so. Okay, so if Kerrigan is the worst one, and you guys think she, <clears throat> he's she's E, then there are some people who are close though. Close, like mm -hmm. Rainer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so are are we okay with putting Rainer in D tier? Yeah, if Kerrigan is in E tier, I'm okay with that. Okay, so once again, Rainer is in D tier, a very, very terrible, not terrible, very, very underwhelming commander. If you want to use Rainer at this, at on this mutation, despite knowing he's in D tier, I don't think that you really care what prestige you use, you're in for a challenge. And just, well, you can use the first prestige if you think your bio is better, or the third prestige if you think your air is better, but it doesn't really matter. Rainer sucks regardless. He has D for a reason. If you use Rainer or Kerrigan, do so at your own risk. Okay, that's, I think, it. Let's move on. This is Kate Lockwell, live for UNN. Dominion security forces are telling us tonight that their agents have hunted down and executed the leaders of a subversive rebel group calling itself Project Shadowblade. Great news, Kate. 
Did they say how they feel about this? Uh, no, Donnie, they didn't, but I imagine they're quite happy. There you have it. Dominion Security, destroying the shadowy espionage arm of Jim Rayner's terrorist organization. Wait, what? Dominion Security didn't say anything about Rayner. Let's go to commercial. 